All right, we have an interesting one for you today, folks. I hope this is my network rack. I have an edge router 6P as the main router. The white cable is plugged into ETH0. That's an Ethernet handoff from a fiber ISP. We're going to be adding that T-Mobile home internet box to ETH1 as a backup failover ISP. We're going to reconfigure this router manually instead of using the wizard so I don't blow away the entire configuration. Come on along for the ride. So one of the reasons why I want to do this test manually, well, a couple of reasons. One, I've had viewers ask me over the years. Two, if I use the wizard, it's just going to blow away my existing configuration. I'm going to have to start over from scratch. And three, I actually have a reason to do it because I want to add that T-Mobile home internet to the configuration as a backup. And again, this has been in production for quite a few years. So if you take a look now over at the router, you can see I have quite a few VLANs set up. If you come over to the firewall tab, you can see I have some port forwarding set up. I have quite a bit firewall rules on each of the interfaces. I have several groups created under services. You can see that I have several DHCP servers and on my main network, you can see I have 30 static IP addresses mapped. So again, if I were to use the wizard, which I can use either one of these two wizards, it would help the situation make it a little easier in one respect but then i would have to create the entire uh configuration of the router over and that's something i i really don't want to do so we're going to see what happens today i'm either going to break this network or i'm going to make it work i am going to be following ubiquity's load balancing help doc and then i'm going to do some of the configuration via ssh and some of the configuration uh using the ui so again I'm either going to make or break this network, stick along for the ride. First thing we're going to do to get started, though, is take a backup. In the event that I break this network, at least I'll have a backup to restore me back to square one. Alrighty, here we go. I'm signed into my Edge Router 6P. I'm on the dashboard, but I'm inside the Systems tab, and we're going to scroll down to Configuration Management and Device Maintenance. And before doing any major configuration changes to your devices, always take a backup. I'm going to do that now. So that in case I break this router, I can actually restore it back to this state and not worry. Now, I talked about following the Ubiquiti Edge Router WAN load balancing document. And you can see here, it's showing you how to do it using the wizard. But again, using the load balancing wizard will blow away my existing configuration. So we are going to follow the steps here under manual configuration. Now, a couple of things to note. Your... WAN and LAN interfaces may differ depending on your model and your setup. So there are certain things in these commands here that I'm going to have to change. And I'll go through them as we go along. So let me go ahead and let me slide this over to here. And let me go open my terminal window. And let me make this larger for us. So we can see what's going on. That should be good. Okay. So we're going to start by signing in via SSH to the router. And again, folks, I'm going to attempt this. I hope it works. Honestly, if I break it, I have that backup file but I have good feelings. I hope it does work. I have not tried this, so you're coming along for the ride. Okay, now that I'm signed into my Edge Router, according to the help document here, it says, the first step is to enter the configure mode. So we're just gonna come over back to the terminal window and we're gonna type in configure. And now we're in the edit mode of the Edge Router. We're gonna create a firewall network group. This is step two that contains the private IP address ranges. So I already have this set up, so I'm not going to actually do step two because if we take a look at my edge router, if we go to the firewall tab, you can see I already have a protected networks group. Now notice the name is protected networks and in the actual command, here in the help document, it's called private nets. I mean, that's your choice. So I need to modify this command and change it where it says private nets here to protect the networks. And also because I have a PPPoE connection and not a dynamic connection to my ISP, I have to change E0 to PPPoE0. So I have to change this interface as well. So to make it easier, what I've done is I've already copied this command with the changes 
to my notepad. So let me just go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. And we'll come over here and we'll paste it into the terminal window. Again, I'm not doing step two because I already had this private address range group created in my router for some of my firewall rules. But if you don't have that, then follow these steps here. All right, so again, let's come into step three. We're going to paste into the terminal window. And usually when we get the command prompt, it means all the commands were executed successfully. Coming down to step four, it says add a firewall rule that sends all other traffic to a load balancing group. So basically what we're doing right now is setting up the load balancing group. Here we go. We're going to copy this command here and we're just going to come over to our terminal window and paste it in. And again, we are back at our command prompt. So hopefully that was successful as well. Now, it says here we need to apply the firewall rule to the LAN interface in the inward direction. So my LAN is on ETH5 on my router. Again, note what it says here. Attention, the WAN and LAN interfaces might differ depending on your edge router model and setup. So I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to paste it. But before I hit return, I'm going to arrow up. to ETH3 and I'm going to change that to ETH5. And now we'll enter the command. And there we go. Okay, so we're almost done. We're, we've gotten through steps one through five. It, it's pretty straightforward. Now, Number six says create a load balancing group that includes the two WAN interfaces. So again, my existing WAN is on ETH0 on the physical port on the router, but it's, it's linked to, because I have a PPPoE connection, it's linked to PPPoE0. So I need to change this command here to PPPoE0. So again, I copied that into my notepad, made the change. So I'm going to copy it from my notepad. You'll see it here. PPPoE0, I'm going to hit enter, and we have our command prompt. So again, hopefully that was created successfully. And now the next step would be to commit and save the configuration. However, before we do that, remember I said earlier, I don't want to load balance between the two ISPs. I want the second ISP on ETH1 to be my backup failover. So there are a bunch of different parameters you can actually add to the load balancing configuration. We are going to come down to the one that says failover and it says interface configured with the failover only option will only become available when the other WAN interface, in this case, ISP one fail the route test. So we're going to come over to here. It is the correct interface. The backup will be on ETH one. So we're going to copy this command. We're going to come over to our terminal. We're going to paste it in. And we got our command prompt, so that's pretty good. And then the final thing we're going to do is just we're going to copy this command here. Actually, we're not going to copy it. We'll just type it in, commit and save the changes. Okay, the changes were saved. Now we're going to exit out of configuration mode. And now the next step is to make a couple of modifications to the configuration using the graphical user interface. All right, so here we are back on the graphical user interface. See those SSH steps weren't all too bad if you follow the load balancing guide and you keep in mind your interfaces may be different from what's stated in that actual document. Okay, so back to the actual user interface. ETH2 is, I'm sorry, ETH1 is going to be the backup. So we're going to click on the actions drop down for ETH1. We're going to come into configuration. And because the T Mobile Home Internet device um, will hand off an address via DHCP, we're going to change the address from no address to use DHCP. And we're going to say save. So that's the first step. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the firewall NAT tab. We're going to come over to the firewall policies and we have to recreate the WAN in and the WAN local rules for the second interface for ETH1. So the easiest way to do it instead of recreating 
the rule set and the rules manually is just come over to the actions drop down, copy the rule set. We'll give the rule set a name. We'll call it when to in and let the router do its thing. Okay, so now we have a WAN2 in rule set with the same two rules, but notice the interface was not selected. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come into interfaces on the new rule set, and we're going to say interface ETH1, because that's the backup interface, with the direction being in, and we're going to save that rule set. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the WAN local. So you can see we have WAN in, which is the PPPoE interface in direction to rules default is drop. And we have the same thing now for WAN two in, but the backup interface is ETH one direction is in the same two rules. We're going to copy the WAN local and do the exact same thing. And then again, we're just going to go in and edit the rule set. We're going to go to interfaces. We're going to say interface ETH1. And this time it's going to be direction local save rule set. Great. And now the final thing we're going to do is we're going to come into NAT and we're going to create a masquerade rule for the backup interface. So again, the easiest way to do this is to copy. And now we have our second copy of the masquerade rule. We're going to go into config and we're going to call this masquerade for WAN2. And then we're going to use the outbound interface ETH1 and we're going to say save. Now, those are all the configuration changes. We did some via SSH where we set up the load balancing group. And then in the UI, we actually configured the interface and the firewall rule sets and the masquerade. So now the next step is to go plug in the physically plug in the T-Mobile home internet into ETH1 and we'll test out the traffic and see how it's flowing. It should flow automatically through ETH0 or PPPoE0, which is ISP1. And if I unplug ISP1, hopefully it'll default over to the T-Mobile device on the zero. So give me a second, I'll be right back and we'll do some testing. All right, so I have T-Mobile router plugged into ETH1 on the edge router. And you can see here the ETH1 interface is now pulling an in address of 192.168.12.66. And yes, I know what you're thinking. It's CGNAT and why would I want to be in a double NAT situation? And I have to be honest with you, in a situation where I've lost my main ISP, connectivity is the priority, right? Because it's only for a short amount of time, hopefully, before the main ISP comes back online. So if I'm working, I'm running a business, or I'm doing whatever, at least I have connectivity and I could deal with it being double NAT as a backup. So uh, we are successfully pulling an IP address, so let's run a couple of tests. Let me bring up my terminal window here. And what we'll first do is we'll just ping out to either Cloudflare or Google. Um, it should route out through the main ISP, which is E0 or PPPoE0, which they're linked together because it's a PPPoE uh, ISP. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll just do a trace route after that to see, just to confirm that it's going out the main ISP. So there you go. So you can see we do have internet connectivity. And if I do a trace route now, it should route out through the main ISP. And there you go. Now, obviously I have my main ISP blurred out uh, for security purposes, but however, it is definitely working. All right, clear the screen. Let's do another ping, and this time, I'll let it run, 
and I'll just run to the back room, to the server room, unplug ISP1, and we'll see how long it takes over. Hopefully, it'll switch over to the backup ISP, which is T-Mobile. Let me go do that now. I'll be right back. Okay, ISP1 has been disconnected. You can see by where we're getting the request time out. You could also see ETH0 up here is grayed out. It's no longer connected. Let's see how long it takes to fail over to the T-Mobile device. All right. Okay, so now we're getting a successful ping, and since ISP1 is disconnected, even though it did take quite a bit to jump over, um, it seems like we're back out on the internet, and if I do a trace route now, let me just do a clear screen, and we'll do a trace route. It should route through the edge router to the T-Mobile device. And there you can see we have our edge router here on 192.168.25.1. And here's the address of the actual T-Mobile device. So it seems like this was a successful venture. Honestly, I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I'm not the strongest when it comes to uh, doing command line work, especially on my main device. So it was a little bit nerve wracking for me, but um, again, following the load balancing wizard, taking into consideration that my interfaces may differ from what it says in the configuration. And then knowing that I had to set up the ETH1 interface, the firewall rules, um, the, the NAT and all that, uh, looks like it was successful. So I guess the next question is, does it fail back over to ISP1? Um, maybe I'll test that. Maybe we'll do that in another video. We'll see if anybody out there knows whether or not it fails back, if it should fail back. I imagine if you plug back in ISP1 and it doesn't fail back and you unplug ISP2, then it has no choice but to route through ISP1. So we'll see. Uh, we'll do some testing maybe in another video. So I hope you like this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, uh, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.